In today's video, I'm going to be presenting my best settings for getting cinematic footage on the GoPro Hero 9 Black. My goal with today's video is to present my best settings in a concise but informative manner so that you too can use these settings to create awesome footage with the GoPro Hero 9 Black. If you're using ND filters for the GoPro Hero 9 Black, there will be one setting that will differ from the ones that I'm presenting today. I will specify this setting when I go through each of the modes. Let's get started. The first step you'll want to take is power on your GoPro. Before we fine tune these settings, you'll also want to make sure your GoPro is running the latest firmware version. If you're not familiar with how to install the latest firmware, I've linked to a video above that will show you a simple and easy process for doing so. Once you've updated the firmware, we're going to get to the main screen right here and we are going to swipe down and we're going to then swipe left. Once you swipe left, you're going to see two options on this screen. One is connections and the other is preferences. We're going to select preferences on the right. There are a couple key settings that we want to change in this first before setting up our four different modes. So we want to click on general here at the top first. And once we get into general, we're going to scroll down and we are going to get to the video compression option. When you select this option, you will want to make sure HEVC is selected. HEVC is a codec that has more efficient compression, but also will allow you to get the highest quality footage on the GoPro Hero 9 Black. Once you've selected that, you're going to go back to the top and go back to the previous menu. We're also going to select displays. And under orientation, you'll want to make sure it's set to landscape. Those are the only two settings we need to change on that menu. Once you've done that, we'll then swipe back up. Once you're back at the main screen, you're going to see a menu option there. It will probably be the name of standard. You're going to click on standard. And once you click on standard, you're probably going to see three or four options here but they will likely not be set to the settings that I have here. They're probably gonna look a little bit different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through these four modes. These are the four modes that I use to get cinematic footage. So we're gonna start with the standard mode first. You're gonna click the edit button here to the right. And you're going to get to this screen here. So the standard mode is the mode that I use anytime I'm talking to the camera and anytime I want something to be the actual speed in the finished product where I don't want it slowed down. And this is the mode that I use often. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the resolution in frames per second to 5K, 24 frames per second. And you're gonna select your resolution first, and then you're gonna select your frame rate second. Now on the GoPro Hero 9 Black, the highest you can go is 5K, 30 frames per second. And we are going to use that for a different mode but for this mode, we're going to do 5K24. Once you've selected that, you're gonna click here. And the next option is lens. For lens, I'm going to select linear plus horizon leveling. The GoPro has four different options for lenses. Uh, the first option is wide. The next option is linear. The next option is linear with horizon leveling. And the final option is narrow. Now the linear with horizon leveling is new to the Hero 9 Black. And the reason I'm selecting that, not only does it take the fisheye out of the finished product, it also adds horizon leveling. And if you haven't seen my video on horizon leveling yet, I have linked to it above. And you should definitely check it out. Horizon leveling is an impressive new feature on the GoPro Hero 9 Black. For hypersmooth, you're going to want to make sure that is turned on. The GoPro Hero 9 Black features Hypersmooth 3.0. As you may guess, it is an upgrade to Hypersmooth 2.0. Uh, the stabilization is more refined and does a better job. Uh, now you could set this to boost up here if you wanted to. This could be useful if you're doing something like biking or running or really fast activity. But generally I like to leave boost off if possible because that does an additional crop and Hypersmooth already does a 10% crop and 10% is all I want. With scheduled capture, duration, and hindsight, I have all of those set to off. 
Uh, if you want to use those features, you can, but those do not relate to the uh, cinematic nature of the footage, so I'm not going to go over those right now. You're also going to see the timer and zoom footage. Those settings do not necessarily pertain to cinematic footage, so I'm not going to change those. The ProTune heading is where we're going to change the bulk of our settings. Under the bitrate option, we want to make sure that's set to high. High is going to give you the highest quality footage, and the bitrate is going to be 100 megabits per second. For the shutter speed, we want to set that to auto. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if you're using ND filters, this will be the one setting that you want to change differently from what I'm showing you. So if you're using ND filters for this, you would set the shutter to 1 over 48. You would set it right there if your frame rate is 24 frames per second. But since we are not using ND filters, I'm going to put this back to auto. For the next setting, EV comp. This is exposure compensation. For this, I always like to set it to negative 0.5. Uh, the reason being, GoPros by default tend to slightly overexpose the footage. And when it's overexposed, you'll miss out on some of those highlights and detail in the shadows. Uh, there's gonna be a little bit too much brightness to it. So I recommend doing the negative 0.5. That way, if you want to add exposure back when you're editing, you can do so without losing some of those critical details. For white balance, I recommend setting this to 4500K. If you have it on the default of auto, your camera can change white balance in the middle of you filming something. And if it does so, it's going to make it much more difficult when you're editing later on to change that. So it's better to set it to 4500K. And if you set it to 4500K, that's going to work for most lighting situations. Uh, if you're in full sunlight, you may wanna set that to about 5500K. And if you're in lighting where it's sunrise or sunset, I recommend something like 3200K or 3500K. But in general, 4500K is going to serve you best for most footage. And when you have it set to that one set white balance, you can easily change the white balance when you're editing. It will save you tons of time, so make sure you select a white balance other than auto. The next setting we're going to change is ISO minimum. Your ISO minimum may already be 100. If it is, leave it right there. For the ISO max, we want to put this at a maximum of 800. Now ideally, you won't ever need an ISO higher than 800 if you're filming in good lighting. But if you're not in good lighting, the GoPro is not going to be your best camera anyway. You're going to be likely to get a lot of graininess, especially if you're moving. And the stabilization also will not work so well if you're moving in low lighting. So I definitely recommend not going any higher than the ISO max of 800. Otherwise, you're going to have graininess introduced into your video. For the next setting, sharpness, I recommend setting this to medium. GoPro's default is going to be high, but I consider high too much sharpness. And if you want to err on the side of having too much or too little, you want to have too little sharpness because it's much easier to add sharpness when you're editing later on than it is to take sharpness away. So this one, I like to set it at medium. It gives a little bit of sharpness. Uh, I did test low when I tested out this camera, because with previous GoPros, I did use low. However, the sensor's a little bit different on this one, and from my observations, medium gives the best results. If I shoot in low sharpness and try to add it later on, it doesn't always line up properly with the footage. It can look a little bit odd. So I have found that medium works best on the GoPro Hero 9 Black. For color, we are going to select flat. The reason we want to select flat instead of GoPro is flat is going to offer us a lot more flexibility when it comes editing time. GoPro coloring is the best action cam coloring that I've seen by default. Uh, GoPro does have a good color science, but GoPro coloring does tend to be a little bit heavy on the blues, and there are going to be situations where you won't want that blue heaviness for your finished product. So I recommend setting flat, and that way you can choose what colors to bring out in your finished product. For raw audio, I'm going to leave that to off. And for wind, I'm going to select auto. These are settings that relate to the audio. The audio is better on the GoPro Hero 9 Black. I will use it from time to time when I simply want that camera in my pocket. 
and if it's not a windy day where I am, it's particularly useful. But if it's windy or if I want really good quality audio, then I'm going to connect to my professional microphone either to myself or to the camera. And in order to do that in this camera, you do of course need the Media Mod. I have not gotten to test those yet, but I did test them on the Hero 8 Black. And the Media Mod was worth it to me as long as you were going to use a professional microphone often with it. If you're not, then I don't recommend the Media Mod. I just recommend using the mic built into the GoPro. The final section here is simply shortcuts and I leave those as the defaults. So that is the first mode. We're gonna go back to the main screen now. The second mode, which I actually find myself using more often than the first mode, is called activity. We're gonna click edit here to get this set up. For the activity mode, a lot of the settings are going to be the same as the standard mode. There's just going to be a few that are different. So I'm not going to delve into some of these as deeply as the standard mode since I've already explained a lot of those to you. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to set the uh, resolution in frames per second to 4K, 60 frames per second. For the lens, you're going to do linear plus horizon leveling. You're going to have hyper smooth turned on. Under ProTune, you're going to have the bitrate set to high. For the shutter speed, you're going to use auto unless you're using the ND filter. If you're using the ND filter for this, you're going to set the shutter speed to 1 over 120. EV comp, we're going to set to negative 5. White balance, we're going to set to 4500K. ISO minimum, we're going to set to 100. ISO max, we're going to set to 800. Sharpness will be set to medium. Color will be flat. And raw audio will be off. And wind will be auto. The activity mode is the mode that I use when I want the motion in a scene to be played back at approximately 250% slower speed. A good reason for using this mode is to make motion have a more dreamy effect. Oftentimes it's good for some slow motion where you don't want it really slow, but where you want it to be 40% of the original speed. I also find it great when you have moving water and you want to kind of emphasize that. It's really a nice mode and I use it a lot. The way I get that slowness is when I'm editing, I interpret the 4K 60 frames per second footage as 4K 24 frames per second. It's a very neat technique and I highly recommend you try it out. We're gonna go back to the main menu again. The next mode is called cinematic. So cinematic is going to be the mode that I use when I want to shoot some footage that I only want to slow down slightly. So I'm going to shoot it in 5K 30 frames per second. And when I interpret that at the end, that 5K 30 frames per second will be 5K 24 frames per second when I'm editing. So that will slow it down to 80% of the original speed. That type of slowness is generally not noticeable. So if 4K 60 frames per second is too slow, the 5K 30 frames per second mode will be perfect for you. So for this mode, once again, a lot of our settings are gonna be the same. Uh, you're gonna select 5K 30 frames per second. Your lens will be linear plus horizon leveling. Your hyper smooth will be turned on. Under ProTune, you're once again gonna select high for the bitrate, auto for the shutter. If you're using the ND filter, you'll put the shutter speed to one over 60. The EV comp will be negative 0.5. The white balance will be 4,500K. The ISO minimum will be 100. The ISO max will be 800. Sharpness will be medium. Color will be flat. Raw audio will be off and wind will be auto. Something else I will note, when you're in the 5K 30 frames per second mode, this also will give you the highest quality footage if you would like to capture an image from the video later on. So let's say you capture a great moment on video and you would like a still image of that particular scene. Later on when you edit it, you can get a 23 megapixel picture from that 5K 30 frames per second footage. So that's a pretty neat feature on here. Uh, the GoPro Hero 8 Black only had a 12 megapixel sensor, but the sensor on here essentially enables you to get a picture with almost twice as many megapixels. The final mode we are going to set up is going to be the slow-mo mode. So this mode is pretty neat and one of my favorites. Let's click edit here. So this one, you're going to select the resolution of 2.7K 
and the frames per second will be 120. So when you do slow-mo in this mode, you can interpret it as 24 frames per second in post-production, and you can get video footage that is 20% of the original speed. In other words, that would be 500% slower than the actual speed. This can be super neat if you're getting something like raindrops falling from the sky, a dramatic waterfall scene. Uh, if you're doing an epic jump while skiing or biking, anything like that, it can look really cool with the slow-mo mode. Even though it is 2.7K resolution, if your finished product is 4K or lower, which my finished products always are, you can upscale it to 4K and it's not really going to be noticeable in most types of settings. So it's pretty neat because the 2.7K is high enough quality, you can use it there as well. And the lens you're going to set to linear plus horizon leveling, hyper smooth will be turned on. Under ProTune, you'll have a bit rate of high, shutter speed will be auto. If you're using an ND filter, you'll set the shutter speed to 1 over 240 for this mode. EV comp will be negative 0.5. White balance will be 4500K. ISO minimum will be 100. ISO max will be 800. Sharpness will be medium. Color will be flat. Raw audio will be off and wind will be auto. There you have it folks. Those are the four modes with the cinematic settings dialed into each of them so that you can utilize these for your projects as well. Well, there you have it, folks. Those are all of my very best settings for getting cinematic footage on the GoPro Hero 9 Black. I have literally put this camera through tens of hours of testing already in a lot of different settings, and it's been a lot of fun. And I hope you find these settings useful as you create epic cinematic content on your GoPro Hero 9 Black. If you have any questions, as always, I'm happy to discuss those and answer those for you. If you found this video to be helpful, please click like, and if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I'd love to have you on board. Until we talk again, happy GoProing.